Hey, 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 Pastor Sean Bowman, coming to you from Victory Lutheran Brethren Church, Jamestown, North Dakota. Come on, get on, let's, let's get into God's Word. It is indeed a time to worship the Lord in thought, word, and deed. Uh, we pray that you are blessed today as we get on the Word of God. It is going to be a time, yes, get on, hit share, hit like. Let's uh, let's get rolling, and uh, and we are going to um um. Now, how do I get the videos to pop out back on? Now I always do that, and now I'm not going to be able to see who's on. Ooh. Hmm. Does anybody know how, to, how I can pop on so I can see your comments? Faye, yes. this thing always comes on your phone says, see Angela's workshop something. And then I, I, I so I hit, so life. how do I, I'm going live. Mm -hmm. How do I see their, their scrolls? Do you know how I, I would mm -hmm. see their scrolls pop up? Comments maybe? Nope. Not comments. I don't know. Um, it used to be four. I used to just roll in. I got ten now. What's, I hate to touch something and I'll lose it. What's, I don't know what that is. I'm not sure. Um, I can Google and find out. Anyway. I'm sorry. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this right now because I'm, I think we used to go to our own, wasn't the yeah, way it, life. Yeah, it always, no, ago. it always was just right there, you know, and lately, the last two times, I have had um, Angela's workshop. And so, you know, and then I'm like, oh, so I'm, I slide it off and then, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, not a problem. Um, we're going to see who's on there, who's saying things, who's doing stuff. So I can, I like to say hi to you guys. And um, it's hard for me to see who's on there if I don't know. And maybe God's doing that for a reason. Who knows? Um, maybe I can do this. Click on the, um, your viewers. Okay, now I see you guys. Hello, Sherry Severson. Hello, Mary Pat Wall. Hello, Sharon Odegaard. Hello, Shelly Lund. Hello, my mother, Jean and Shirley Wolf. Welcome. Hello, Tracy Testison. And uh, I am glad that you guys are here. So good to have you a part of um, a part of this. We are blessed to have you today. Okay, uh, we're going to get into God's word, and I believe you're going to be very blessed today because oh man, it was just we had a rich, rich study earlier today. Uh, we're looking at Colossians chapter three. Uh, Colossians chapter three. And uh, I don't know how far I'm going to get in this Colossians three, but I'll get uh, I'll get a little ways into this, and then we're going to stop and just take a look at uh, we're going to stop and take a look at the at the word, and uh, maybe we'll roll on with this Colossians three tomorrow. This is good. This is good. Uh, I, I'm going to title this one: "Clothe yourself, clothe your heart and your mind." Clothe yourself with love. Clothe your heart and your mind with love. How do we do that? That was the big question the men had today, uh, as we were uh, as we were wrestling with the text, and uh, it was it was uh, it was an awesome opportunity for us to talk about some deep spiritual questions. So Colossians chapter three. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Okay, since. Then you have been raised with Christ. Uh, is that is that past tense, future, uh, present tense, or future tense? Well, uh, if I remember my uh, my English classes, uh, I would say that that would be a past tense. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. That's big because you're going to need gospel in this text and we're going to see how that gospel makes itself come alive for you. Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on the things above. 
Well, we have the things below and the things above. The things above are the things of God. The things below are the things on earth. So a kind of a setting the stage for what we need to, to understand as we roll into this. Set your mind on the things above where Christ is seated. Okay? So, so we're clearly getting this, this, this proclamation that we want to be focused on the things above, on where Christ is seated, on the heavenly dwellings. And uh, the, the thing I threw out to the men here this morning is, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do we clothe ourselves, our minds and our hearts with love? How do we do that? I try and I always seem to fail. What, what's going wrong? We're going to wrestle with that today a little bit. We're going to wrestle with that. We're going to go to the first 12 verses. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll get long and then I'll hear about it. So we're going to go 12 verses. I'm sure we'll go a half hour at least. But I'll give you good news. Set your minds on the things above, not on the earthly things. For you died and your life, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. For you died. What? I'm still living. I didn't die. No, the old man, the old woman who lives in you, you were born with a wicked, sinful nature. When you get saved, when you come to know Jesus, when you receive the Lord Jesus into your heart, you go from death to life. When you go from namby-pamby to I, I believe and I'm walking in that which God has done for me, there is a newness that happens in you. Your heart is, is, is set on the things above when you uh, are delivered uh, into the newness of Christ. Okay, so you died, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So Christ, he's, when, when, when Nicodemus came, he said, uh, how, can I, how can I know that I'm going to go to heaven? And Jesus said, you must be born again. Oh, what does that mean? Well, what it essentially means is when Christ comes and lives within you, Christ is hidden in you. Uh, people can't see Jesus, they see you but they see his actions flowing out of you. And when Christ, who is your life, see the Bible says that Jesus came to give life. He is life. When your life is Christ and he appears in and through you, then people see his glory through your suffering, but your faith. God is building your faith up during these times, these troubled times, for a purpose, for a reason. So Paul says in verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to the earthly nature. Well, what belongs to the earthly nature? Oh, you know, things like sexual immorality. What's that? You know, things like impurity. <clears throat> Have you ever been around people? They think it's funny to tell dirty jokes all day long. They think it's, they love to talk crass about sexual body parts. Their, their, their mouth is filthy. They swear all the time. I told the men in our Bible study, imagine you have a spiritual engine. You know, everybody's got to pull out the dipstick once a month. You got an old car maybe once a week, like my pickup. And you got to check the oil. Imagine you have a spiritual engine and you pull out the dipstick and you check the oil. You know your oil's low if all you live in is sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires, and greed. If that's, if that's where your heart dwells and lives, my friend, your spiritual engine oil is on the bottom of the dipstick things aren't good. And because of these, the wrath of God, the Bible says, is coming for those who have turned away from God. But listen to what Paul says in verse 7. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now, now you must rid yourselves of all such things. Well, 
how do I really know that my dipstick is low? What's a good barometer to, to check that dipstick and to know? Yeah, I, I struggle with that sometimes. Here's how you know that your, your dipstick is on empty, your spiritual dipstick. When you pull it out and you, you see anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, and lying. If these are the things that are coming out of your lips, you're running on empty. And the question I throw out to the men, the question I'll throw out to you is, how do we fill up the spiritual engine with some good oil? Well, this text, I mean, that's just a metaphor I'm throwing out to you, but this text kind of gives us the answer of how it all happens. Verse 9, Paul says, Start with, don't lie to each other, since you've taken off your old self with its practices and you've put on the new self. Who's the new self? Christ. Which is being renewed in knowledge and the image of your Creator. Here, here, is the picture of it doesn't matter what people group. doesn't matter what color your skin is. doesn't matter if you're a Norwegian or a Swede or a, a German or a... doesn't matter if you're, you're f you know, from an islander or from Africa. It doesn't matter. Here in verse 11 it says, There's neither Gentile or Jew. There's neither circumcised or uncircumcised. There's neither barbarian or Scythian. Neither slave nor free. But Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as Christ, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, the Bible says, clothe yourself with compassion, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another, forgiving one another. And if you have and and if 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 any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. I'm gonna stop there. We're gonna pick it up on twelve next week. But what I want to say is the dipstick is full when you start seeing things like compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's how you know the dipstick is full. So how do we get there? Well, as Christians, the Bible says you're in Christ. You are united with him in his death and his resurrection. Therefore, Paul can write that you died in verse 3. And he can also write, you've been raised with Christ. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God, in verses 1 and 3 it says, In the future when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory, it says in verse 4. Because of all that Jesus has done for you and made possible for you, you need to reclothe your heart and mind with Jesus. But the question is, how do I do it? How do I do it? told the men today, and I've told you this a few times before, but through the Word of God, you know, when, when I want to go to Fargo, i got to get out on interstate. I get out on I-94. Uh, I-94 goes to the east and to the west. And I liken I-94 uh, uh, with the law and the gospel. The law cuts. Second use of the law, it's a hammer. It's a curve. It's a mirror. The law has its purpose. But without the law curving me, hammering me, showing me how it is that I get to live my life out in Christ, the gospel is really, really nothing more than good advice. And my dear friends, if that's all you have is good advice, you're living under the yoke, under the burden, under the weight of the whole world. You're living under... You're, you're not free. If, if the gospel is nothing but, but good advice to you, you're not really free. You're not really clothed in the way that I just talked about. So we ask the question, how do you get clothed? How do you get there? Well, the question is, or, or, or not the question, but really the, um, 
the yeah the question I'll go with the question the question is when you wake up every day and you're dealing with sexual impurity impurity lust evil desires anger rage malice slander filthy language and you're lying when you do that and you come under conviction the Bible says it is your gift that you're under conviction. The cross is there for you right now. And you're out on I-94, the law is doing its work. It's doing a second use of the work or a first use of the law. It is crushing. It is weight. It is conviction. And, and when that conviction comes upon you, you confess your sin, and the Bible says even a confession of sin, the book of Ephesians talks about, even repentance comes from God. You respond in God's word. You either respond by walking away from God, or you respond by confessing your sin because he gave you the confession of sin. He gave you that opportunity, and so he gives you forgiveness, and you confess. He brings you to the cross. He shows you the dipstick is low. He shows you where you're falling short. And in the midst of you falling short, you, you, you confess, God, forgive me. Forgive me of my rage. Forgive me of my, my, my anger. Forgive me of the malice and slander. Forgive me of what's flowing out of my, my lips, the filthy talk, the cussing, the swearing. The, the lying to myself and to others, the little white lies or the great big lies. Lord, I'm guilty. Please, God, wash me, forgive me. And the other side of I-94 is the gospel. And the gospel says you are forgiven. It is done. It is new. It, you have been clothed with the love of God. He fills you. The mystery of God unites you. He's hidden in you, but you are new in Him. You are born from above because you confessed your sin. This is an objective work. This is the work of God coming to you and just blessing you in the way that only God can do it, in the way that God loves to do it. Oh man, I love this thing. Is Could I get us happy medium with this camera? He loves to bless you in only the way that He can bless you. That's, that's God's heart. And He gives you the forgiveness. And you're going to do one of two things. You're going to respond and confess your sin. Or you're going to walk away from God. You're going to do one of two ways. And if you stay on, a, on, on I-94, if you stay in the law, it's going to show you your filthy anger, rage, malice, slander. It's going to show you you're going to have the low dipstick. And my dear friends, when you confess your sin, when you call upon the name of Jesus, there is something that happens. The Bible says that He clothes you with the robe of righteousness. He warms your heart. There is something that happens objectively, God work, but now subjectively, you're receiving, you're believing, you're confessing, you're calling out in the name of Jesus in the way that God's called you to do that. And there is something else that's created. It's thanksgiving. And in the midst of thanksgiving, you thank God that He's now made you new in Christ, that He set you free in Christ, and that He's washed you and clothed you. You get this because it's something's happening inside of you. The old man, the old woman is gone, and the new man is living in you. You don't know how it happened. You don't know why it happened. But you now love your enemy. You now want to... To, to walk in a newness and a pureness of God. And God in His love and mercy declares and gives that love that, that, that sets people free. And so, and so you, you step out in a supernatural way. Well, what happens? When you confess your sin, there is a response in the confession of sin of thanksgiving. And it flows out of you. 
That's what happens for, with, with someone who's a born-again Christian. When you confess your sin, you go into a spirit of thanksgiving. You, and and, and you, you keep calling upon the name of the Lord. The infilling of God's Spirit does a supernatural work in you that delights your spirit and causes you to want to keep thanking Him. But you walk on a supernatural ground. You declare a supernatural word. The world doesn't get it. The world thinks, you're loco. You're crazy. And you know what? We are fools for Christ, but we love people and we know that we're not, we don't belong in a nut house. We belong in God's house. And we know that our mansion is being built and we know that our time is, is coming for us to step out of this old body and into the new because it has been done for you and won for you in Christ. And like I said on Sunday, hope against hope. This world schemes up all of these ways to find new ways to hope in something. But our hope isn't in hope. Our hope is in the promise. And the promise was through Christ. He was the promised seed. And we see this from, from the Abrahamic covenant all the way up to the cross of Christ and now lives by the power of the Holy Spirit in and through you so that you can declare the mysteries of God's word to people that hate you, dislike you, say bad things about you, are attacking you. They, they are your enemy, but you love them because they're, their only opportunity uh, is is for, for through you and your love to hear the love of God and for them to get saved. Remember, the Bible says, broad is the road which most people will take that leads to hell. Narrow is the gate, Jesus said, I am the narrow gate, that leads to heaven and only a few find it. You are the few. God found you. He set you free. He anointed you. Not to sit back and play tiddlywinks on Sunday morning for an hour and just do coffee with your godly Christian friends. My friends, Jesus is coming back. You're, stepped, you're called to step out into the mystery, into the supernatural holy ground of God, declaring the promises that got you, won you, washed you, so that in your thanksgiving, you start telling people, you can be set free like I was set free. You can have God the way I have God. It's your gift. And if you just uh, see in the Word of God, look right here where it shares this, this, and this, and you could just share the law, share how they're missing it, and then share how you've missed it. They're going to think that you're just a Pharisee if you're just trying to trying to make them do something that they can't even do. But the more you read the Word of God to them and show them the law, the more He does the work in them. And there is, there is repentance that's produced within them through the Word, the object of Word that you're reading to them. And then you share your story. Remember, it's His story becomes your story and it eventually becomes their story. That's the ultimate goal is He wants to make disciples through you and through the person that you witness to and then through the next person. We are busy doing this. This is the last thing we have to do before we go to heaven is to bring as many as possible. He's calling us to do it. Today is the day of salvation and you have it, but you get to go on. Check the dipstick, see how you're doing. And in the midst of that, go and confess. And then in the midst of confession, confess and know that the Spirit of God has clothed you with the power from on high. It's a beautiful thing. The power from on high. And, and so, because of all that, Jesus has made it possible for you to believe that you have been clothed in your heart and your mind. He's made it possible for you to change what you think about on a daily reaction. He's made it possible for you to start living in the right actions and to move away from the wrong actions. He's made it possible for you. You can now live in the resurrected power of God because Jesus said that uh, through Paul that he has set your hearts on the things above. And here's the secret. The more you think about the things above, the more you, you react in the, uh, on the things below. We're, we're living in the world below here. The more you react in the world below in supernatural ways. Because God has set your minds on the things above. Keep your mind on the things above. Well, how do you do that? Repentance and thanksgiving. And, you know, it's not easy because you're surrounded with earthly things, it says in verse 12, or verse 2, excuse me. You're surrounded with earthly things in verse 2. All the temptations. But that means killing off everything connected 
with that way of death? How do you kill it off? The Word of God. How do you kill it off? Stop going to that place of darkness. How do you kill it off? Stop the relationships that are causing you deep temptation. you got to stop them. You can witness to them. You can pray for these people. But stop giving your heart over to them. Be in the world, not of the world. Kill off those ways of death that have a stranglehold on you. Kill off the sexual promiscuity. Kill it off. Kill it off. What's that mean? Well, stop having sex outside of marriage. Stop letting your grandkids do that. Stop thinking it's okay for homosexual marriage. It's not. LGBT. No. God's Word spoke clearly. It is what it is. The Word of God. I don't apologize for God's Word. It is what it is. Call it out and quit approving it. That's putting to death the things of the, of the down below. You know, um, stop doing what feels good and do what the Word of God calls you to do. Well, if you say, oh, that sounds so hard, then you start with repentance. If you're saying, oh, that's big and heavy, then you're not moving in grace, you're moving in law. If it sounds like something you could never do, then just start with repentance. Go through this checklist. Rid yourself of the anger, of the rage, of the malice, slander, the filthy. Rid yourself of the attitudes of the heart. Because even if you can hide that rage and anger and malice and slander and filthy talk and the, 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 all of the lust and impurities and promiscuity, if you, if you can hide all that stuff, you know in your heart how you really feel. So don't lie to God. Don't lie to each other. Run to the cross. And in repentance, when you confess these sins to God, hear this. You are forgiven. You're forgiven. Now stop going to these places. Walk in the light of God. Put on the clothes, the new clothes that Christ clothed you with. Be renewed in mind. Be renewed in heart. Be renewed in the image of Christ. He is your creator. He's creating all things new. Put on your new clothes. For you are one of God's chosen people. And you are called to live a life such as this. This means radical change in your position in the world. To be a Christian, you radically change. This means stop being passive and become active. Real Christians are active. They're not hidden. Remember that little song we used to sing in Sunday school? Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. We are called to be active. Instead of the bad stuff, you're called to clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And my dear friends, the more you run to the cross, the more He gives you the faith to confess and after confession, responding with thanksgiving and, 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 and responding in the new mind and heart of Christ as He's clothed you with His righteousness, <coughs> you're going to find yourself doing the very thing that my brother Steve Wall said happened to him. He said the more he got into God's Word, the more he... He, he didn't notice much of anything. But his family and friends started saying to him, you have changed. He said, what do you mean? You're so different. Uh, we notice compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience flowing out of you. And Steve said, you know what? That's not something I try. I set out for. It's not something I tried to do. It's something God produced in me. Because I knew how low my dipstick was. 
And the more I got on my face before the cross and confessed my sin, the more hungry he gave, he put in me to, to learn God's Word, read God's Word, be renewed in God's Word, and something supernatural happened in me, and I know I am clothed in the righteousness of Christ because God's Word has done it for me. Therefore, I love to tell people about what God has done. Just shared it just a half hour ago. There is no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He can do for you. That's the love of God. That's the love of God that does it for you so that you can be clothed in Him. We're going to dig in more into this tomorrow, but I'm going to pray for you guys. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, um, I'm going to see if I can't see a few of these prayer requests that have popped up uh, because um, it's important to, to hear your guys' prayer requests. And um, if you've got some prayer requests, go ahead and just just let me uh, let me know. Uh, but I'm going to pray right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for the anointing, the special infilling, the love of God to be on Gwen and Eunice, on Rena and Paige, on Lulu, on Yvonne and Shelly, on Sherry. Father God, I pray in Jesus' most precious name for the others that are hearing me that I don't see on my thread. In Jesus' name, O oh Father God, I pray that you would fill them with faith to run to the cross, not once a day, not twice a day, but 10,000, 100,000, 50,000, maybe 20 times, maybe 100 times. Lord, as much as you think, of, as much as you stir in our hearts to run to the cross, help us to run to the cross. Help us to step out as new creations. Help us to step out as the loved of God, the anointed of God. Help us to see that we are active and not passive in our faith. Help us, Father God, to live this out and to walk on holy ground. For people will say the same thing about us as they do about uh, as they do as they did about Steve, and and so many others that have been set free through the blood of Christ. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name over Eunice and er, uh, Wayne Oliver's house in Jamestown. Father God, I pray that you would make this house like a shining beacon on a hill, like it would be a uh, 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 honey to a bear, like it would be a flower to a bee. Father God, we pray that you would cause people to want to fight over this house and, uh, and offer more than what it's even on, on the listing price. So Lord, I just commit this house sale now in Jesus' name to Wayne and Eunice. Father, bless them and help them to sell this house. Oh, Jesus. And Father... Uh, we pray over uh, uh, Bill Walsh. Lord uh, went over to his place here on Sunday night. And and uh, just as he and his son Todd were getting ready, 52-year-old son, same age as me, Father God, as, they, as he was getting ready for church, Dad, Todd just dropped over right at the kitchen table eating his breakfast. And he stepped out of this body and into the next, and he was new in you. Lord God, thank you that Todd loved you, Jesus. I know that he loved you in a big way. And Father, I, be, I pray over Bill as I just buried his wife a year ago. Father God, in Jesus' name, would you just comfort old Bill who's now lost his wife and his son. His heart is so heavy, but he loves you too, Jesus. And I know that he is he is trusting in your promise just like we are. And I pray that you'd help the church to come around him. Father God, I pray for Brother Brian Lacey as well. Bless him as they're uh, wrapping up harvest. Thank you for every farmer on this thread. Lord God, protect them in the fields. It's dangerous work. Bless their crops. Father God, when you bless the farmers, you bless the communities around them. And Lord, our communities are so grateful for how the, the, the ebb and flow of, of everything has been set up, that we live in safe communities, that we have laws that we can follow so that there are uh, uh, stop signs and, and we know what right from wrong. Lord, we draw all that from the Ten Commandments. You gave us that. 
And as Christians, help us to remind the world that what they have been given is a gift from God. And Lord, help us to be the salt and light. So Lord, I pray for your anointed blessing. Fill each person on this thread with the love of God, the anointing of God, the mercy and grace of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. You are God's loved. Thank you for being with me today. I appreciate you guys. If this, if this uh, teaching today has blessed you, uh, hit share, hit like, because we want people to come to Jesus. That's a way for us to evangelize, is to just keep reaching people for the Lord. I have, this electronic church spans out. I've got people that are sending in tithes, no kidding, from Georgia, from Idaho. Uh, we've gotten stuff from Texas, from Illinois. We got people all over, Minnesota, South Dakota, Montana. We are the electronic church. You are not alone, my friends. You are in Christ. You. He's clothed your mind and your heart in the robe of love, in the robe of righteousness, in the robe of Christ. Go in peace and serve the Lord. This is Pastor Sean Bowman from Victory Lutheran Church in Jamestown, North Dakota, bringing you God's word, heralding the good news of Jesus Christ so that you could be free and know that when you die one day, you're going to be immediately with Jesus. So go forth, children of the Most High, and proclaim Christ your Savior. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.